Hello, Ian Edge of the West. Thank you for joining us today. I am very excited to be showing off Unfathomable. This is a reskin of one of my favourite games of all time. We, the people that are going to be going to show you... Wow, I lost that train. We are going to be showing you how to play this game, and we, the people, are... My name is Tom. We have a Pav. We have a Kai. Hello. We have a Billy. Hello, hello. And we have a Chris. Going on. This is a hidden trader game with a lot of different moving parts, and to show you how it all works and how you take your turns, Kai, how do we play Unfathomable? All right. Unfathomable is a hidden trader game we are on a ship heading to Massachusetts, but unbeknownst to us, there are several, possibly, traders on board trying to sink the ship because they're working with these great old ones and deep ones to try and uh, yeah, sink the ship and, and kill us all. We are delicious food, I suppose. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you, you look delicious. I, thanks, thanks, man. Oh, cool. Throughout the game, we are each going to take a turn, moving around the ship, killing off some old one monsters, saving passengers, fixing the ship and generally trying to limp our way into harbour before disaster strikes. So, at the beginning of the game, we're all going to get dealt out a loyalty card. We're either going to be humans or hybrids, which are half human, half deep one, hence hybrid, who are trying to work with the monsters to sink the ship. And I think their end goal is to become a deep one, right? They want to be one of these things for well, some strange reason. Yeah, I mean, all they, all they have a choice eventually. <laughs> Depends on which, which story you're reading, I think. So on our turns, we're going to do a few things. We're going to start by drawing cards that match our character's skills. We all have different characters and we all have different skill sets. Which you can see the cards yet yeah, down the bottom there and the skills listed on our character sheets. So these skills are going to be used throughout the game for skill checks, which will pop up in various locations. But generally speaking, it'll be a challenge that we need to, as a group, overcome to stop something bad happening or to make something good happen. However, traders or deep ones can throw in cards that don't match the colours that we're looking for to negatively affect it. So there's a, a bit of uh, uh, treachery going on there. So on our turn, we draw those cards, then we can take two actions. Those actions can be from a pretty wide range of things. For example, moving to any space on the board. There's no individual movement. It's just move from any one space to any other space. That's a movement. We can attack Deep Ones, which are these ugly monsters on the ship here, or reveal traitors. If someone has revealed themselves as a traitor, we can attack them because we don't like them anymore. <laughs> we can rescue passengers, which are these tokens that you can see floating around on the board here. Generally speaking, we don't want the human passengers of the ship to die. When they do, we lose resources, which you can see on these pretty dials up the top of the board. When any of those dials hit zero, the ship becomes either unpilotable or sinks or we run out of food and begin to starve and we lose the game. The humans lose the game, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're a bad guy, call you now. <laughs> I haven't dealt the loyalty cards yet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> uh, we can also use an action to enable trading. We're going to pick up items and things throughout the game. We might want to trade those to other humans. So if we're in the same space as someone else, you can take an action to trade or allow other people on your space to trade. Shotgun. Ooh. You can use an action that is listed on your character card. Some of us have got unique actions. For example, my action is to move to any deck space and then perform an action. So I almost get a, a free move to a deck space. Mm -hmm. Deck spaces are the exterior spaces of the ship. You've got interior spaces, which are interior. <laughs> and you've got sea spaces, which are the sea. <clears throat> uh, other people will have other actions. Not only that, but the skill cards that we're drawing to contribute to those skill checks that I talked about before some of those also have actions that will allow you to discard the card and take special actions, just to mix things up. The actions of the spaces, so the interior spaces of the ship have got their own unique actions tied to them. For example, in the captain's quarters, you can initiate a skill check to vote to send someone to the brig because you think they're suspicious. Uh, in the cargo hold, you can draw items. In the galley, you can risk floods to draw skill cards. All the interior spaces have got their own actions and you can use one of your actions to take that action a lot of actions in one sentence. <laughs> uh, you can only take interior room actions once per turn per room. So you can't sit on one room. Uh, and lastly, the final action you can take is to reveal yourself as a trader. If you've been playing as a hidden trader and you think people are onto you, or you just want to mix things up and, and have some more fun, you can reveal yourself as a trader and then start playing the game slightly differently. We'll get to that. Uh, when we have some traders pop up, but the short version is they can start attacking other players and passengers because everyone knows that they're a trader now. After taking your two actions, you draw a Mythos card, which is one of these cards over here. Mythos cards will generally have a skill check 
to overcome, as you can see on the side there, meaning that we need to reach a total of 10 of the two skills listed, in this case, strength and intelligence, to pass, which is usually either a good or neutral uh, action or effect, or we fail, in which case a worse or, or pretty bad thing will happen, which generally not good for the ship. Sometimes it's not a skill check, sometimes it's a choice, and I might say the current player chooses, the captain chooses, or the keeper of the tome chooses, which is some different roles throughout the game, uh, and it will be choose between A or B. Usually that's bad and worse, or just two different flavours of bad, depending on <laughs> what resources we're low on, and things like that. Once that action has been revealed, down the bottom right-hand corner of the Mythos card are two little symbols. One of them shows which creatures activate, whether it's the deep ones, which are the minions uh, we're looking at on the board here, Mother Hydra, which is this big in here, or Father Dagon, which is this big guy here, all have different effects. The deep ones generally run around the ship, killing passengers, killing us, breaking rooms, making a mess. Mother Hydra and Father Dagon stay in the water, but damage the ship and spawn other deep ones, respectively. Ew. Mm. Once we've activated the monsters, we then look at the last icon, which tells us which track to advance. The example we've got here is choose, uh, which means that the current player, unless otherwise specified, chooses which track to advance, but there are some that will specifically be for the movement track and others that will be specifically for the uh, ritual track. We want to move those because, generally speaking, we want to get where we're going. The humans want the ship to finally reach land so we stop being harassed by sea monsters. Every time the ship uh, token moves forward a space, the creatures in the water move backwards a space as the ship keeps moving past them. So eventually we can move past the monsters that are in the water. However, the ones on the ship don't go anywhere because they're travelling with us. Once it reaches the end of this space, the arrive space here, Whoever the captain is at the time draws two of these waypoint cards and picks one to resolve. The waypoint cards will have different movement numbers up the top and different effects down the bottom. Generally, we want higher movement to get where we're going quicker. We need a total of 12 movement to reach our destination. But sometimes the negative effects written on the card offset that and might make it a worse choice. Secretly, the captain picks one of those to resolve, puts the other one at the bottom of the deck. No one knows what that card is, whether it was better or worse. Having a traitor as the captain is usually not great. <laughs> Once that's done, we put the selected card out here so that we can keep track of our running total and the ship token moves back to the start space. Once we have a total of 12 movement out, we just need to get that to the arrive space one last time and the humans win the game. The ritual track, slightly different. Every time the ritual track reaches the cast space at the end here, a ritual is cast from within the ship and it deals a, a massive area of effect where everyone that is outside of the ship, that is not in an interior space, is defeated. That means passengers die, players get sent to the sick bay because they're wounded, old one, uh, deep ones or the great old ones get defeated and moved off the board if they're uh, the little deep ones here, or back into the deep if they're the big old ones here. Is that the only way to get rid of the old it ones? It is the only way to get rid of the great old ones. So if they're sitting here bombarding the ship, and causing general havoc, we really need to get them yeah. back to the deep. And the only way to do that, because we can't attack them directly, is to activate the ritual and banish them back to the deep for the time being. Good to get rid of those guys. Not so good if we're all standing outside <laughs> and getting hit by this uh, <laughs> yes. ritual at the same time. <laughs> exactly. Or if there's a group of passengers on deck that are going to get killed by it as well. Bit of a balancing act there. That can also be brought both forwards and backwards in the chapel space. So it's not just the tracks on the cards that do that, but it can be manipulated from the chapel space off the board as well. Uh, that's a pretty general overview. There's a few sort of minutiae and, and things that we haven't gone through in complete detail. There's different damage cards, so damage can happen in different ways. There's item cards that we'll find throughout. When we do skill checks, we throw in two cards from the, uh, the chaos deck here. <laughs> Lots of little bits and pieces like that, and there's a lot of specific wording and things as we go. But that's a pretty general overview of... And halfway through, the, uh, you'll get another... ...biology of an action. Halfway through, you'll get another... Yes, halfway card. through the game. Once, once we've reached six spaces of travel from the captain's cards, uh, you deal out the rest of the hidden trader cards, the... What were they called, Mystic? Uh, the, the roll cards. Roll cards. Uh, and then it's basically guaranteed that someone at the table is a bad guy and you've got to start killing people. Yes. Yeah. So at the very start, it's possible that no one is a trader. By halfway through the game, it's guaranteed that at least one, possibly two people 
are a traitor. And if you are a bad guy and you happen to have both cards, it's probably time to reveal because then you get to give your other card to another player of your choice as long as the humans haven't reached 12 spaces of travel yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is unfathomable in a nutshell. There's a lot of little things going on, but on your turn you just take two actions and hope for the best. If you want to see it in action, <laughs> we're about to do a playthrough of it. And if you just want to hear our thoughts of it, we do a review at the end. So keep your eyes out for those on YouTube in the future, and we will catch you next time. Bye.